For over a century, archaeologists have marveled at Peru's ancient line drawings. Now, a breakthrough approach is rewriting what we thought we knew about these massive works of art. Artificial intelligence just discovered 303 new Nazca lines in Peru in only six months. Using AI-assisted surveys, Sakai and his team were able to re-examine the distribution of these figures found across the desert. For comparison, traditional methods often took years to find just a handful of new figures. Among these discoveries, one stands out. For an archaeologist, this is a great challenge. It can be called, especially in the early years, as a puzzle. A 72-foot killer whale clutching a blade, carved beside an ancient footpath. This geoglyph has been invisible to human eyes for nearly 2,000 years. When you look at how many lines are actually there, it's an incredible number. Over 800 lines total, hundreds of geometric shapes, and at least 100 animals are present in this whole area. And it's forcing archaeologists to rethink everything they thought they knew about what the Nazca were really trying to say. The Nazca people. For centuries, the Nazca lines lay in silence, etched into the desert like a message meant for the sky. The Nazca civilization thrived in southern Peru from about 200 years before the birth of Christ until 600 years after, surviving in one of the Earth's most unforgiving deserts. But their most enduring mystery is what they carved into the Earth, vast lines and figures that can only be understood from above. These lines are incredibly long, perhaps miles, and they're straight as a ruler. The first recorded discovery came in 1927, when archaeologist Toribio Mejia Zespe found them while surveying ancient roads. But they remained largely unknown until the 1940s, when American historian Paul Kosuk flew over the desert and realized their true scale. From the air, he saw what looked like a star map drawn across the Earth. He called them the largest astronomy book in the world. But here's the problem. For nearly a century after that, human eyes could only find what was obvious from the air. What made these lines even more intriguing was the way they had been created. Workers scraped away the reddish pebbles covering the desert surface, exposing the pale soil beneath. And this contrast of color formed the outlines. Over time, the extreme dryness of the region preserved the drawings, protecting them from erosion and rain. The people who made these geoglyphs belonged to a certain class. For example, a potter couldn't just start drawing in the pampas. Some of the lines stretch more than 30 miles across the desert, while individual figures, like the famous hummingbird, extend up to 300 feet in length. And here lies the mystery. From the ground, they appear as random paths, almost impossible to piece together. But when you take a look at them from the air, the figures reveal their true shapes. The Nazca had no balloons, no aircraft, and no satellites. How then did they effectively design works that can only be understood from above? The catalog of their creations is as strange as it is vast. Among the most iconic are the hummingbird, drawn with delicate precision, wings outstretched across the sand. The hummingbird geoglyph in Nazca is approximately 320 feet long, or 97.5 meters. The monkey, its curling tail spiraling outward like a cosmic symbol. The spider, stretched long and thin as if crawling across time. And the so-called astronaut, a bulbous figure raising one hand skyward, carved into the side of a hill. Scholars have distinguished between two main styles of these geoglyphs. The line-type geoglyphs, which are immense geometric shapes drawn with straight or curved paths, and the relief-type geoglyphs, the smaller and more detailed figures of animals and humans. Theories about their purpose have filled decades of debate. Some argue the lines formed an astronomical calendar, aligning with the solstices and the movements of stars. Others believe they were ritual pathways, meant to be walked during ceremonies to honor gods of fertility and water. Like we said, the desert was a place of survival, and many scholars tie the geoglyphs to worship of the forces that made life possible. 
Some other theories, fueled by imagination, have claimed they were landing strips for alien visitors. Many people think the theory is about extraterrestrials who built the geoglyphs. It's a complex phenomenon, and to explain it with extraterrestrials makes it simple. An idea made famous by Eric von Däniken in the 1960s and still lingering in popular culture today. What's undeniable is that these designs demanded vision, labor, and an understanding of scale that seems to stretch beyond their time. For nearly a century, human eyes studied these lines from the ground and from the sky, tracing every angle, cataloging every shape. Yet many figures remain hidden in plain sight, too eroded or too faint for the human eye to recognize. Until now, artificial intelligence has finally entered the search, but what it's discovered is nothing like the world has ever seen. And one symbol in particular stands out, threatening to change everything we thought we knew about the Nazca people. AI joins the search. Within only six months, artificial intelligence flagged 303 previously unknown geoglyphs scattered across the Nazca desert. To put that in perspective, traditional methods often took years to find a handful of new figures. With the help of the AI, we found uh, more than 300 new figures. Some estimates suggest Al's discovery rate was more than 15 times faster than manual surveying. Here's how it happened. Masato Sakai, a distinguished research professor at Yamagata University, had spent years surveying the plateau on foot with his team. But by the mid-2010s, it became clear that human vision alone was not enough. The desert stretched too far, the lines were too faint, and erosion had hidden too much. So, Sakai's team partnered with IBM's Watson Research Center to teach artificial intelligence to see what people could not. Researchers fed Watson thousands of images of confirmed geoglyphs. The most important question was, why did they build the geoglyphs? What function did the geoglyphs have in relation to their daily activities? Training its algorithms to recognize faint outlines across satellite and drone photography. But the most shocking aspect of the new discoveries wasn't just the number of new geoglyphs, but the unsettling nature of the finds. The previously well-known figures are enormous and dramatic. They can be seen from low hills or even from the desert floor, if one knows where to stand. However, these new finds were different. Many were small, fragile, and painstakingly constructed by carefully arranging rocks into precise forms. These relief-type geoglyphs are so faint that, to the human eye, they often resemble nothing more than random debris scattered across the desert. Of course, even a machine's judgment cannot stand on its own. Every candidate flagged by the AI I had to be confirmed on the ground. And so, archaeologists returned to the desert, ready to retrace the paths drawn nearly two millennia ago. For an archaeologist, this is a great challenge. It can be called, especially in the early years, as a puzzle. More than 2,600 hours of human effort went into verification. Researchers hiked across scorched valleys, flew drones over suspected sites, and photographed from the air. Again and again, the results came back positive, proving the AI was right. This collaboration between technology and archaeology changed the very scale of what could be known and revealed a haunting truth. Most of the geoglyphs the Nazca people carved could still lie out of reach. And now, artificial intelligence has also forced us to confront the eerie intentions behind what we're seeing. The most haunting discovery. Among the newly uncovered desert figures, one has risen above the rest. Near an ancient footpath, etched into the ground with stones so faint, lies the outline of a creature 72 feet long, a killer whale, its body curved across the sand in a form unmistakably deliberate, and in its grasp lay something chilling, a blade. This was not the usual playful orca we recognize from our own oceans. To the Nazca, the killer whale was a mythic predator, a force of power and dread. On pottery, it often appeared with knives or clutching severed heads, 
and the geoglyph on the desert floor mirrored those same terrifying motifs. This was not just an animal rendered in stone, it was a declaration, a figure meant to embody destruction and the frightening intimacy between humans and their gods. What made this discovery more disturbing was its placement. The orca was carved directly beside a path, once used by travelers and pilgrims. The orca is one of the most mysterious and ancient drawings of the Nazca field, and it took 50 years for the Peruvian state to recover it when it was already lost. Anyone walking that route in ancient times would have passed its gaze. The symbolism of its placement was unmistakable. The killer whale marked the passage from ordinary ground into a sacred space of ceremony where blood and prayer blurred. This discovery breathed new life into theories about the purpose of the Nazca Lines. Some scholars believe that the glyphs were pleas for rain, etched into the desert as offerings to the gods of water. The orca with its knife sharpens these ideas, especially because this was a figure previously tied to the cosmos and to fertility. Many of the newly identified glyphs reinforce this same darker vision. Figures of humanoids appear holding what look like trophy heads, echoes of the skulls found in Nazca burials and shrines. These heads were not trophies in the modern sense, but sacred offerings believed to contain the essence of life and used to secure agricultural fertility. When seen alongside the killer whale's blade, the pattern is undeniable. Sacrifice was not an occasional act to these people, but a cornerstone of belief and the desert itself became a vast stage on which that belief was written. Another unsettling detail is how the symbolic language was not meant to be understood in fragments. These figures clustered near paths and their placements shifted with the seasons. Some glyphs may have appeared clearly only at certain times of year, revealed when the low sun cast shadows across their outlines. In those moments, the earth itself would speak the desert opening its surface to reveal deities, animals, and spirits woven into the ground. Ancient Nazca people created animals, figures, and abstract forms on the flat desert floor and hillsides. Many archaeologists and researchers have pointed to the dark truth that this newly discovered killer whale with a knife is a reminder that the Nazca lines were never a puzzle of straight lines and pretty pictures. Anthropologist and archaeoastronomer Anthony Avini believes the lines were a coded language bound to ritual. He suggests the lines were pathways for processions where the Nazca people walked during rituals to honor deities linked to water and fertility. Several other archaeologists have admitted to feeling an unsettling chill when gazing upon the geoglyphs. These lines must have inspired this same feeling in pilgrims a thousand years ago, as well as the realization that the desert was watching. Yet researchers tread carefully. The idea of sensational theories, like aliens carving runways and otherworldly messengers, has long clouded the study of the Nazca lines. And while the stories the lines tell are haunting, they are also sacred. To interpret them carelessly is to strip them of their meaning and reduce them to spectacle. Ethical research today insists on a different approach that involves preserving the glyphs as fragile heritage, listening to indigenous perspectives, and resisting the temptation to turn them into myths that belong to outsiders. Still, the power of the discovery cannot be denied, and this giant whale is only one of many. Because, as the A, I continued its sweep across the plateau, more figures emerged, each one strange and each one unsettling in its own way. If the orca was a warning, what then were these others? And what stories are they whispering across the centuries, waiting for us to finally see? Other unsettling finds. Among the most striking of the newly discovered geoglyphs are the humanoid figures with distorted, exaggerated features. Over 140 mysterious new geoglyphs have been discovered in Nazca, Peru, including strange humanoid figures. Some appear to have oversized heads, others elongated limbs, or strangely twisted postures. They do not resemble ordinary people. Instead, they look closer to spirits, deities, or mythic beings, 
shapes pulled out of ritual imagination and carved into the earth. These figures suggest that the Nazca did not only carve the world they saw, but also the world they believed in, a realm where humans and spirits blended and where the earth itself became a canvas for myth. Another equally fascinating discovery is the processions of llamas. These animals were essential to life in the Andes, used for transport, wool, and ritual sacrifice. Seeing them stretched across the desert floor in deliberate order suggests more than simple depiction. Procession scenes are inherently ceremonial. They suggest movement toward an offering, a shrine, or a sacred place. A line of llamas carved into the sand mirrors the very processions the Nazca people enacted in life. Birds, too, dominate the new finds. Some are rendered with wings dramatically extended. The hummingbird geoglyph in Nazca is approximately 320 feet long, or 97.5 meters. Their bodies stretched out as if caught in endless flight. In Nazca belief, birds are not only creatures of the sky, but also messengers between worlds, the ones who crossed freely from earth to heaven. Their wings, spread wide across the desert, may have symbolized transcendence, freedom, or the movement of the soul. To carve them on such a scale was to bind that symbolism into the land itself, so that the desert became a place where flight and spirit coexisted. These new figures are proof that the Nazca lines were about a system of belief drawn again and again in different shapes and forms. The humanoids, llamas, birds, and even the killer whale were not chosen at random. They are all interconnected. And with every new discovery of these geoglyphs, the desert grows less like a barren wasteland and more like a sacred land where ancient civilizations passed across messages and warnings. The Nazca lines have survived for nearly two millennia, etched into the desert floor, where little rain and wind ensured their endurance. But today, their survival is no longer guaranteed. Natural erosion slowly blurs the sharpness of the figures. Climate change brings sudden downpours and shifting sands that can wash away outlines once thought eternal. Tourism, too, takes its toll. Planes, drones, and even footsteps on fragile soil risk leaving scars on a landscape that was meant to remain untouched. Here, artificial intelligence has taken on a new role, not just as a discoverer, but as a guardian. By mapping, recording, and digitally reconstructing the lines, AI preserves them in a form that cannot be erased. Every shadow, every faint trench carved by the Nazca hands is captured and stored, building a record more detailed than any human survey. Even if wind and rain one day claim the originals, the shapes will not be lost. The desert may change, but the memory of its stories will endure. The success of AI in Peru is only the beginning. Archaeologists now imagine similar technologies being applied across the globe. Archaeologists have located 300 more geoglyphs in the landscape using AI technology. In the Amazon, where dense forests hide entire networks of ancient cities, AI could pierce through the canopy, revealing roads, plazas, and temples buried beneath the green. In the Sahara, where shifting dunes bury ruins overnight, AI could track the faint traces of settlements swallowed by sand, even the steppes of Mongolia, once roamed by nomads whose burial grounds remain scattered and hidden, could be opened up by algorithms trained to recognize what human eyes miss. What once took decades of painstaking fieldwork may soon unfold in months or even weeks. AI does not grow tired, it does not overlook, and it can process in hours what humans might take a lifetime to study. Yet this speed also demands caution. Each discovery must still be placed in context, treated with respect, and understood as part of the living heritage of real people. Are the Nazca geoglyphs coded messages meant to warn us? Drop your answers in the comment section below.